Hey there, it's Joe Simons, Like Diamonds. Welcome back to the Joe Simons, Like Diamonds show, where every day, Monday through Thursday, I give you one big awesome action item to get you more happiness, more fulfillment, more purpose in your life in seven minutes or less. So let's start the clock right now. There it goes. So this one is a really, really interesting one, and I have to imagine impacts most people in America. And this is five signs or five things that you might be doing that means you're probably addicted to your phone. Oh, where is mine? I really don't have mine, I'm freaking out right now. Uh, but no lie, I mean, this is a real disease, if you will, or a, a, a real problem going on so much that they've actually named it nomophobia, N-O-M-O-phobia. Nomophobia means that you get anxiety and stress and possibly even break down when you don't have your phone in front of you, when it's, you know, it's saying in, in doctor terms, it's being out of your cellular phone contact. It's the fear. And you know what the fear really is? It's the fear that you're gonna miss out on something, right? And because I've, I've been there, and if you've read my book, I have a whole chapter about just the importance of control in your life and how a cell phone can control you and can actually really, really, really badly hurt your happiness and your fulfillment in life when anything controls you, whether it's alcohol or drugs or a phone or gambling, any, any of those things can truly, I mean, have a devastating impact on, on your happiness. But anyhow, the, I guess the feeling is or the fear is that you're going to miss out on something. And, and you know what I realized after really taking a step back and looking how much control a phone had over my life, I was missing out on something when I turned it off or turned the ringer off or moved it away from myself. And it wasn't what you think. I was missing out on life. I was missing out on being present. I was missing out on some of the best times with my kids growing up. And my wife was the one that called me out on it. And I didn't realize how bad it was. And I, once again, I, I talk about this in the book and really throw myself under the bus and reveal a lot about how much it controlled me. Uh, but I, I could not go through a dinner. I mean, this is a dinner at my house with my awesome, amazing family. Some of the best times I'm going to have with my kids when they're actually there and present as well before they get into sports and boys and girls and all the other stuff that happens as teenagers. And yet I can't even go through a freaking dinner without my phone either on the table or at least in my pocket would be the worst case scenario. And my wife called me out on it and I was like, oh, I don't have a problem. And I realized, you know what I did? And so now today I am not allowed to have the phone on the table and I don't want it. And it's actually just peaceful to put it away where I can't hear it. And I don't have the ringer on, I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but that it's always on vibrate. And I can't even hear the vibration that it's so far away that I couldn't get it if I wanted to. And I'm telling you, like, I speak with my kids more. I'm learning more about them. I feel like I'm present and I'm happier because of it. So I'll, that's one thing I encourage you to do. But let's go through the five, you know, the five things that you might be doing that means you are a nobophobiac. Number one is that you just get anxious when your phone is not around. And I know I've been there before. If you think about it, most of, our, most of us are spending our entire lives or the majority of our lives with the phone near us. I mean, 24 hours a day, why we go to the restroom, why we travel, why we sleep, it's right near us, near our bed. I mean, it's crazy how close we are to our phone. Most of us spend more time with our phone than we do our spouses and our kids and our coworkers and our best friends. That's sad. And that means you might be a nobophobic. Uh, number two is you can't put it away at dinner. I just explained to you that was a big issue for me. And I see people out, I mean, at restaurants, and some of them are on dates. Good Lord, people. No wonder you can't get a, a good relationship. And if you're out on a date, or a, whether it's your first date or your third date or your hundredth date, even my, my wife, who I've been married to for many years, like I would never can imagine keeping the phone on the table out at dinner. Shame on you people. That means you have some serious issues. Put it away. Don't even take it on the date. What are you possibly going to miss? And if you answer the phone during a date, I can pretty much guarantee you will not be on another date with that person. That's number two. Number three is you can't turn your ringer off for a full day. I too struggle with this. And if you read the book, Fishing for Happiness, I talk about my solution was to turn my ringer off. And I've, I, this has been probably now three years I have not had a ringer on. My, my friends can tell you, I used to have the most obnoxious Will Ferrell ring. It was hilarious and people laugh when it went off, but I, I don't remember the last time I had my ringer on it. It has been that many years and 
there's nothing that's more important to me than just being present and no matter who I might be expecting a call from, that ringer's off. And I'll have it on vibrate and I'll be able to see it sometimes if I know I'm expecting a call, but I'm telling you, that was a game changer just not to have that stupid tone. And don't you hate it when you're around other people in a public place and you hear the ringer like, man, just shut that thing off. It's annoying. And if everyone in America turned their ringer off and just kept it on vibrate, this place would be a much better place. It's an action item for you there. Uh, the fourth one here is you can't turn your phone off at nighttime. I've been hearing about the new stats on there's more people today having sleep issues and not being able to fall asleep and getting enough sleep. Well, no wonder they keep their phones on at night. You keep a ringers on at night or the dings and the beeps and the vibrates. Turn the sucker off. I've been turning mine completely off. And for those of you that say, oh, well, gosh, I, I, have, I use my phone for my alarm, guess what? On most all of these phones, the alarm will still kick on even if the phone is completely shut down and off. But worst case, you can put everything on airplane mode or do not disturb. I highly recommend you do it. I get the best sleep because my wife and I have agreed that we keep the phones completely off. There is nothing that's going to be that much of an emergency where we have to answer our phone while we're getting our sleep. Okay, that's number four. Number five, that you have turned around on the way to work, to a flight, to a kid's play, whatever it might be, kid's soccer match, to turn around and go home because you forgot your phone, that you were getting that much anxiety that you had to go turn around, even though you probably didn't really need it, but you made some excuse why you would, that I want to take pictures or someone might text me, etc. So those are all the reasons, and there's plenty more, as you probably know, uh, but those are the main five reasons that you might have nomophobia. But what I hope you get out of this is uh, it's so important, I mean, so critical these days to just be present. If you watch my episode yesterday, there was a lot. And the episode yesterday was 24 things that dying people wish they'd done differently. There were so many of those things that dying people regretted that revolved around this, about being present, about talking with friends more, not like texting them, about just being there and having a relationship with people and understanding what's important. I don't think any of us, if we're in our deathbed right now, would say, gosh, I wish I spent more time on my phone looking at the news or looking at Facebook or Snapchat or whatever you happen to be into. So put the thing down. Turn the ringer off for crying out loud. Speaking of annoying beeps, golly, nailed it. All right, that's it. Next episode, stay tuned tomorrow. Joe Simons over and out.